Hi people, my name is Miriro. If you're new here, welcome to the family. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So today's video is in collaboration with First Rate Tutors, right? That's an education channel here on YouTube. And basically they tutor young people who are doing their GCSE and A-levels. So that's definitely if you're in your high school stage and you need assistance with math literature english literature and history so you should definitely check them out i'm gonna leave their link down below in the description box and i'm going to attach their link right now i hope you can actually see it and you should go and check them out if you need any assistance with those things so first rate tutors have asked me a number of questions and basically what i'm supposed to do is to answer them and i'm sure this is going to be a great opportunity for you to get to know me if you are new here um in terms of what i'm currently doing my hopes and you know just 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 a few questions you know what i mean just just a few questions that i'm supposed to answer so the first question is who are you and where are you from originally so my name is Miriro Munodawafa, right? And I am Shana. I come from Zimbabwe, which is a small Southern African country in Africa, of course. Um, and yeah, that's where I come from. I grew up in the capital city of Zimbabwe, which is called Harare. The second question is, you're a law student studying in South Africa what inspired you to get on this path right so i think there are two parts to this question first that i'm a law student and secondly i am studying in a foreign country i am not from south africa but i am studying here so i'm going to answer it in the two parts first why am i a law student right i think for me i i'm one of those people who has many interests i just enjoy a number of things i just have a curious mind and i think growing up i've always known that I would want to get involved in a lot of things but i had to get to a point where i had to focus and really think about something that i would really really love to do but i actually definitely am going to need a qualification in it right so obviously i had thought of media and journalism and stuff like that but i can kind of enjoy that part of me for example by starting a youtube channel but with law I can't exactly do that so I actually needed a qualification in it I don't know if you get what I mean so I decided to um, study law the second reason why law is because for me I've always known that whatever it is that I'm gonna be doing in life involves working with people and serving people and empowering people and I've generally been a person who reacts when there is injustice um i just i don't know i'm one of those people if there's injustice i just respond naturally so i really do believe that i that's something that i could contribute to in the legal fraternity in the legal professional space i definitely do believe that we do need more voices we do need more black women who are in that career part in terms of the second part of this question which is in south africa particularly so the first reason why i decided to study in south africa was because i had studied in zimbabwe for my primary education and my high school so i'd been there for 13 years of my life and i believe that being at school should be a holistic experience you're not only there to learn in class but i think there are also so many lessons you can derive from being in a specific environment and just the experience of it all the exposure that it would come with i really wanted to be in a sort of different space in some way that's slightly unfamiliar to what i had always known so i did decide to study in another country so for the exposure for the full holistic experience of studying in somewhere that's completely new the second reason is because Vitz University, the University of Vitt, Batisrand, um, is, I don't know if I said that right, it's Afrikaans and I don't speak Afrikaans, you know what I mean? But anyways, it is one of the best universities in Africa, so I definitely wanted to be in a great institution that would open up certain opportunities for me. Um, and also just being able to interact with great minds, people who have, um, like, a just great inputs in my life and i can definitely attest to that being like my expectations being met because i think beyond just the books beyond just the law i've grown in so many other ways i'm more open-minded it has stretched me even in lectures we engage with different philosophies different ideologies that really just enable me to see the world to see life in a completely different way the other reason why i came to south africa is because in zimbabwe we don't have um 
as many competitive universities. I mean, um, Zimbabwe produces like some of the best minds. Honestly, I believe in this world, Zimbabweans are super, super smart. However, there's a lot of competition in terms of getting into the really, really great universities, right? And law is a very, very um, competitive area. So just because of that as well, I knew there were a number of students who also wanted to go and study law. So I then decided, no, let me actually come to South Africa. And I think a number of Zimbabweans also choose the same thing. We have a number of Zimbabweans who study in South Africa as well. So the next question is, what is the biggest hack you recommend to students in law school? What can they do to win in this challenging degree? So the first thing I will say is, winning is relative you know but in terms of a hack there are a number that i could give but i think the best one i could think of was consistency you definitely need to be very consistent as a law student i can tell you this law is very content dense it's just a lot it's a lot and i think one of the things that make the degree in itself difficult is not necessarily that it's extremely extremely challenging what's challenging is being able to handle the how overwhelming it can be you know you can get a case that's 100 and something um, pages and you need to read maybe like an average of three cases from one module and then you have like maybe five to seven modules in one semester so that's like an average of like 21 cases in a week and that's added to like other readings and stuff. So you definitely have to be consistent and ensure that you're always up to date with your work. Um, that's the best that I can give because sometimes leaving things till last minute in law school does not work for you. It will not, it will not work, trust me, it won't. Do you have a study routine? If so, can you share it? Mm. Now, I, I am not a routine person. I suck at having routines. I've literally tried so often, but I really, really suck at having like the exact same day. I wouldn't say I have a strict study routine. However, I do have structure in the way I study. And I think that's very important because if you are just like all over the place, then you're not gonna be as productive. So you also need to know what times you study, what time you, you, you really can optimize and be the most productive. And for me, I found that most times that's during the night, like in the middle of the evening. I don't know why, but I, 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 I don't know how to explain it. I'm not exactly the best day person, but in the middle of the night, I can definitely work better. And also one thing I have found that has assisted me in just the way I do my studying is I make a lot of lists, a lot of lists, right? So for example, when I begin the semester, I always ensure that I write down all the assessments that I have and the assessment dates so that I know exactly when each assessment is going to be taking place and on what day it's going to be taking place so that I can prepare beforehand. Before each week starts, I always have a priority list. So I know that this week, for example, in this upcoming week, I have a practical legal studies um, assessment that or tutorial that I need to submit. I have another tutorial that I need to submit. Maybe I have an online quiz that I have to do. So I basically do those lists. And then per day, I then look at my timetable. I look at, especially now that we're in quarantine, I look at the different online classes I have to attend and where I can fit in study time, where I can fit in rest time and stuff like that. And I think it's very important for you to, to just know how you work and come up with a structure. Before we went into lockdown, I did have a schedule that I had. I basically, in fact, I will try and take a picture of it and put it up on the screen, but I, I did have a schedule that I tried as much as possible to follow, but obviously you have to be flexible um, for any other things that might happen. Where do you see yourself in five years and what are you doing to get there? <laughs> so it's so funny because I'm always telling people you need to prepare for what you are, you know, working towards. You need to start preparing for your goals. You need to start preparing. You need to know exactly where you're going. Um, and then when you ask this question, you have to sit down. You're like, mm, am I actually doing enough? <laughs> in five years, I definitely see myself working in, in, in something to do with policy 
education and development. I, hopefully it will be for an international organization. I have a specific one in mind. I also want to start my own um, organization um, and it's going to be centered on education, but rather education that a lot of students are not taught in the classroom that addresses um, different issues in our society. So things like gender-based violence, financial education, things that people or young people are facing but are not addressed at school. The third thing is I see myself contributing significantly to the media space. I don't know in what capacity, but I definitely do know that I want to be in media um, and I do want to write as well. I'm very passionate about telling the Zimbabwean story specifically. Okay, now to what I am doing now to get there. I think one thing I've set my mind towards is right now in the season, I just have to prioritize my degree. I have to prioritize ensuring that I finish strong. So that's definitely something that I'm doing now. Another thing is, especially with the media thing, in terms of education and stuff like that, I think I have kind of um, embraced that even through this YouTube channel. And also in terms of the education part of it, I have partnered or I have taken part um, in different workshops. We have been to a number of schools, basically teaching young people about menstrual education. I write down my goals and I think it's a day-to-day -day thing. I have to prepare myself and I have to work on it on a day-to-day -day basis to ensure that I actually realize the goals and the dreams that I have for myself. Yeah, so thank you so much guys for watching. Again, my name is Miriro Monodawafa. My channel is Miriro Moments and I really do hope you decide to subscribe and check it out and enjoy. You definitely should comment down below and answer some of these questions for yourself. I would love to get to know the type of people who have watched this video. Where are you? from what are you currently studying what are your goals to do subscribe share and comment toodles